In this video, we're going to look at some useful relationships between partial derivatives that involve rearranging uh, the order of different variables within the partial derivative. Now, I call this partial derivative gymnastics just because it's very reminiscent of, you know, doing different moves with these partial derivatives in the vein of a mathematical gymnast, right? So you can think of these all under the guise of partial derivative gymnastics, but it's really just rearranging partial derivatives um, in a way that can prove useful uh, when deriving a lot of expressions in physical chemistry. So first, let's think about a general function. So let's say we have some general function z. That is a function of x and y, right? If we know that this is a function of x and y, we can write out its total derivative, right? So the total derivative dz would then just be dz dx, constant y dx, plus dz dy at constant x dy. Right, so we've seen this total derivative written out before for plenty of general functions, right? So I just want to give us a general framework to work off of when we're deriving each of these uh, relationships in the partial derivative gymnastic sequence. So the, the first one that I want to look at is called the inverter. So I've given each one of these um, a name. Uh, some of these I've seen standard other places. Um, you know, but you might not see these in really official math textbooks, but I think these are really useful titles to be able to remember some of these relationships for partial derivatives. And I don't want to just give them to you. I want to go through somewhat of the derivation of how we attain each one of these expressions. So the starting point for the inverter, I want you to consider the following relationship. So consider that if we have the partial derivative dz, dz, at constant y, we could really hold x constant as well if we wanted to, um, but if you look at dz dz at constant y, that's going to be equal to 1. Now derivatives function in the same way that variables or numbers do in this way, whereas if you put um, the total derivative of z over the total derivative of z, it's just like dividing x by x. That's going to be equal to 1, right? So derivatives function in that exact same way. So anytime you see dz dz or dx dx, right, that's going to be equal to one, right? So what does that mean for us? Well, that means that if we uh, take the derivative with respect to z of this entire total derivative, right, it's all going to be equal to one. So let's do exactly that, right? So we're going to do dz dz at constant y of this entire total derivative expression. So how do we do that? Well, anything that's already a partial derivative is just going to come down, right? This is the nuts and bolts of how you do this, right? So dz dx at constant y, right? And then when you have a differential like this, this differential dx is now going to be differentiated with respect to dz at constant y, right? So we'll have uh, dx dz at constant y. Plus, again, this partial derivative here is just going to come down, right? So we got dz dy at constant x. And then this differential is just going to be differentiated with respect to z at constant y. So now we'll have dy dz at constant y. And all of this is going to be equal to one because we know that dz over dz is going to be equal to one. So if we take the uh, derivative of this total derivative differential with respect to z, it's all going to be equal to one, right? So we kind of set this up. This is a starting point for deriving the relationship of the inverter. Now, one thing I want you to notice here in this second term, right? This second term, we're taking the derivative of y at constant y right? This is actually always going to be zero. So anytime you see this, right? And it just goes back to original, you know, kind of calc one logic, calculus one logic, where um, if you're taking the derivative of a constant, that's always going to be zero. So if we're taking the derivative of y at constant y, well, y is not changing. So the derivative here is going to be zero. So this guy actually cancels out and is equal to zero. So we're only left with that first term, right? So that first term survives, right? Nothing cancels out here. 
So you're left with dz, dx at constant y, dx, dz at constant y is equal to one, right? So uh, what you can do here, right? So you have these two, right? You can solve for one by, you know, dividing on both sides by one, right? So basically what we'll do here is do the algebra to isolate this dz dx at constant y term. So we'll have dz dx at constant y is going to be equal to one over dx dz at constant y. Right, so this is the property known as the inverter, right? It's usually written in the following fashion though. So usually we'll write it out in the following way where you'll have dz dx constant y is equal to dx dz at constant y to the negative one, right? That raising to the negative one power is just the same as one over uh, whatever you're raising to the negative one power, right? So um, this is known as the inverter. So let's go ahead and box this guy in. This is the inverter. And why do we call it the inverter? Well. It should be pretty obvious here, right? So this is, you know, you can just say that dz dx is gonna be equal to dx dz, the inverse of dx dz, right? So this is basically saying that for any partial derivative, you can freely flip these guys um, as long as you're, you know, doing the inverse of that second derivative, right? So this can be useful for a function where you may know how z changes with respect to x, but how x changes with respect to z may be less clear, right? So you can just freely flip those guys as long as you take the inverse. So that's how the inverter um, can be useful, and this is its definition, right? Okay, so the second one that I want you guys to be familiar with is called the permuter. Right, so the permuter, we're going to use this exact same total differential expression to derive the permuter, uh, but use a little bit of a different starting point. So the starting point here is going to be uh, the fact that dz dx at constant z is going to be equal to zero, right? So and this uses the exact same logic that we use here, right? If we're looking at the change of z at constant z, that means that the derivative is going to be zero. So, uh, so we know that this is going to be zero. So if we uh, go through this total differential and differentiate with respect to x at constant z, um, that's how we're going to derive the permuter. So let's do it. So for dz dx at constant z, right? This first partial derivative, again, just comes down, comes along for the ride, so dz dx at constant y, then we're going to differentiate x with respect to x at constant z. So we'll have dx dx at constant z. Plus, again, this partial derivative just comes along for the ride, so we have dz dy at constant x. And then for this differential dy, we'll just have dy dx at constant z. And we know that this is going to be equal to zero, right? Okay, so now within this, we get something that cancels out to one, right? This dx dx term, right? Just like with dz dz, right? This guy is gonna be one, right? So that guy cancels out as one. So uh, we can also uh, bring this guy to the other side, right? So this second term can come over to the other side so we end up with the following. So we'll have dz dx at constant y is going to be equal to negative dz dx, or oops, dz dy at constant x, dy dx at constant z, right? So this is basically just bringing that second term across the equal sign. Since we know that it's gonna be, the whole thing is equal to zero, we know that these two terms will be equal to one another. And this is the permuter. This relationship is the permuter.
right? So, um, so for the permuter, right, we call it this kind of because it, it really does end up just being a permutation here, right? So you can think of um, this guy kind of being an expansion, this term on the right being an expansion of the one on the left, right? Just including the term Y, right? So you, kind of if you remember cross multiplication, it kind of feels like that. That's why I call it the permuter. Um, because if you like cross multiply here, you kind of collapse to this uh, derivative. Now, like I said, that's not exactly what's happening here, but that's how you can think of it and remember how to apply the permuter in different situations. Okay, so the last one, I'm going to go to a different slide here. So the last one that I want you to be familiar with is called uh, Euler's chain relation. So Euler's chain relation. And the starting point for Euler's chain relation is actually going to be the permuter, um, the permuter relationship itself. So let me rewrite the permuter relationship here. So we'll have dz dx constant y is equal to negative dz dy at constant x dy dx at constant z. Right. So uh, so this is our permuter relationship. Now, what we can do on the left hand side, we can actually apply the inverter to the partial derivative on the left hand side. So if we do that, we know that this will be equal to one over. Dx dz. At constant y. Right? And that's going to be equal to all this stuff on the right hand side. Right. And so now that we have this, right, we can actually multiply on both sides by this partial derivative that's in the denominator here. And that's going to give us uh, Euler's chain relation. Now, this negative sign is usually put on the left. So I'm going to do that here. So negative one is going to be equal to. dz dy. At constant x. Dy dx. At constant z dx dz at constant y, right? So all I did was just multiply on both sides by, uh, by the partial derivative that was in the denominator here. This is Euler's chain relation. And you can kind of see how it changed, right? So you have, you know, dy dy chaining here with the first and second partial derivatives and dx dx chaining here with the last two partial derivatives, right? So that's why I call it, or that's why it's referred to as the chain relation, because you got to have this chaining of, of partial derivatives for these three related variables, right? Okay, so those are the three uh, partial derivative gymnastics move that moves that you need to be familiar with uh, when working with equations here in physical chemistry, um, the inverter, the permuter and Euler's chain relation. Now, you don't have to derive them every time, of course, right? You really need to just know what I've boxed here um, and be able to use these relationships. But I wanted to make sure, just in case you hadn't seen it before, where these guys come from and why they're actually valid.